and welcome to Yen TV. Uh, I'm with Tom Reardon, Chief Exec of Lead City Council, uh, who will be joining me today in a, in a Q and A session. Welcome, Tom, and, and thanks for coming. Hi, Shiraz. Great to be here. Let's get straight into it, Tom. Um, there's a number of questions we've had come in from from a number of our members, uh, and the first question, I suppose, is is devolution. One, um, before we get into the different formats of devolution, what does that actually mean? Because uh, that's, that, that's a big area where people are slightly confused on how it's implemented. Is it a Yorkshire Parliament? Does it mean we have mayors? Uh, what does devolution mean to you? Uh, the thing that it means to me is when I'm trying to run the city, um, if we get an accident in the city centre and people block the junctions, the yellow boxes, or a vehicle breaks down on the inner ring road, we don't have the power as the council to move that car or to, um, to find those drivers. And so the very basics of running our city are done by people sat in London, sat in Whitehall, 250 miles away. So what it means to us in the council, what it means to us in Leeds, is that we've got to get more control to, to run the city and to shape our own destiny. We know we can do it better than people who don't know uh, the area. And so we believe very strongly that we should have more devolution. At the moment, what it means isn't a Yorkshire Parliament um, at this stage. What the government of the day is, is offering is um, mayoral deals, and uh, we want one. We've just got to find out the exact geography because it's slightly more complicated in Yorkshire than other parts of the country. Uh, and do you think other local authorities are just as keen for devolution? Yeah, they are. The uh, Bradford in particular and Leeds, I think, are now at the point where we really want to sort this out and we want to get, get moving and stop talking about it. Um, we think it's, it's uh, wasting a lot of energy from people um, and we, we could be better actually delivering things. And I think the West Yorkshire authorities generally are keen to, to do a deal, but obviously it needs to be the right... Um, the right economic footprint, I guess, and that's where we've had the wrangles and that's where we've got to get through this, this next phase of agreeing exactly what the mayoral geography would be. Okay, so what, what do you think needs to be done in order to, to achieve a deal? What's the, what's the next, next step in the process? I think what we've got to do is get everybody into the room, um, ministers, um, local authority leaders, um, civil servants, and basically um, lock them in a room until they sort it out, actually, is probably the best way to do it. But the, the, the process will probably kick in after the May elections, the May local elections and the first mayoral elections. And I think there's an appetite from both government ministers and from local authority leaders to get this sorted. I expect it to take a few months, but I'm confident we can do a deal and I think we should be able to do it by the end of the calendar year. And, and do you think with, with Brexit looming, it, it's even more important now? Definitely, definitely. I mean, we've got all these uh, powers and um, resources, if you like, if you count European structural funds, coming back to the, to the UK. We're already the most centralised state in the developed world, apart from Albania, apparently. Um, if we add further to that centralisation by not repatriating those powers to a local level, then it will make the situation even worse. And I, I think local people want more control over what's happening here. And I think it's, it's almost inevitable that devolution in England is going to happen. We've just got to make sure we do it quickly now. And, and what kind of measures do you think need to be put in place to ensure that, I suppose, there's a, there's a fair transition in terms of responsibilities? I mean, having further controls on budgets and being able to make decisions is one part of it. but. I suppose having a fair slice of the pie, which is quite often mentioned between the north and the south, where mm. we don't seem to receive the, the same level of support from central government uh, as, say, other constituents in the country. I think um, I think that that is a, a fair criticism when you look at things like the transport funding, where you know we get I think it's uh, currently about eight times less than London per head, um, but even other parts of the country get more than, than Yorkshire. Now, you, we can have a big debate about why that's the case. It's governments of all persuasions, actually, of the last 20, 30 years this has happened with, so it's not a political criticism of any one party. I think all of us have got to take collective responsibility for putting that right. I think our, our um, submissions to government need to be better. 
I think we've got to bring more to the table. And that's what we've done recently with the 173 million that we've got for Leeds Transport, where we've put forward a really compelling case for better buses, for more park and ride, for new train stations. But the real, um, the real prize, I think, is the one about mass transit and about real, you know, real um, investment over a sustained period for Leeds and, and Yorkshire. And we've got to make that case more effectively and we've got to implement it and government's got to listen to that. Yeah, uh, in, in, terms of, in terms of doing it yourself, um, Erwin Mitchell uh, released um, the UK Northern Powerhouse report uh, and, and it states that Leeds is due to grow by, I think, another 183 million this year. Mm. Uh, what do you apportion that growth to and, and what do you think needs to be done to, to continue that? Well, I think here in Armley we can see that with uh, the digital companies that you've got here um, in, the, in the building and I think that's where you know, we, we've got a fantastic opportunity because we've got this great diverse economy in Leeds with, um, and Yorkshire with um, you know, a mix of manufacturing. We've got, we don't have a Nissan or a Jaguar or a Land Rover, but we have the supply chain for those industries um, and those manufacturers are first class and continue to be significant with the biggest manufacturing area actually if you take the Leeds City region outside, outside um, uh, you know, probably with anywhere, including the Midlands. Um, but we also have we're strong in financial services, in healthcare, um, and all those all those are growing. But the real growth, I believe, and the the stellar growth and the opportunity we've got is in digital and tech, and big data, where we have uh, this this great mix of existing companies like uh, TPP and Emis on the healthcare side, um, Skybet and William Hill. Um, we've got the the digital bases of ASDA and Direct Line. We've also got the Big Data Institute in Leeds University. We've got the NHS um, Digital, um, Quango here. So if you put all that together and you look at what's happening in the, the economy across the world, Leeds has a fantastic opportunity to not just be the tech capital of the North, which it is, but to be the tech capital of Europe. And that's what we're aiming for. And that's where the growth is at the moment. Uh, big data has been a, a big conversation point for, for some time. and. One of the areas where I think big data might potentially be lacking and I think could be incredibly valuable to, to businesses and organisations is how that knowledge and information is transferred to SMEs and how they can take advantage and capitalise on that. I mean, is there anything that Leeds is doing as a city to, to support SMEs in using that information? Yeah, we, we are. We've got um, a, a partnership with the University at Leeds um, called the Leeds Institute of Data Analytics, LEADER. And um, there's some really good outreach work being done um, with that institute, with uh, SMEs linked into the local enterprise partnership. But the big, one of the big issues for all of us is skills and keeping up to date and making sure that we, we have the right talent um, available. And so we're doing some great work through a digital skills board um, for uh, recruitment and uh, apprenticeships where a um, company called Herd and Amy DeBalsi have worked with us really well on um, a digital skills fair which is happening soon um, at Leeds Arena. The, la the one last year was incredibly successful with a lot of SMEs attending that. So yeah, we're trying to do our bit to help. There's been a lot of investment and support for, for apprenticeships. How successful has that been in Leeds? Really successful. And if you look at where the apprenticeships are in the country, the north does a lot better than the other parts of the country. And I think we get apprenticeships in this part of the world. I think people, you know, sometimes find the skill system incredibly difficult to navigate and to understand all the different, you know, qualifications and, um, and modules. But an apprenticeship is something everybody understands. And I think what we've seen in the last few years in Leeds is it, its extension from the traditional industries to industries like law, where we've encouraged the legal firms in Leeds to all take on apprentices. And what we're finding there is that they're helping those businesses even more than uh, the traditional graduate retention, the, the graduates who are coming in, um, because they're so hungry and also they're so uh, committed to improving themselves. So, you know, apprenticeships are, are thriving in Leeds. Another issue that, that Leeds is facing, um, like many of the cities, is, is budget cuts. Yeah. Uh, and one of, the, one of the areas where our members are concerned, uh, especially with Brexit looming as well, is SME support. Mm. which traditionally, you know, well, recently, a lot of which has come from European-funded initiatives. Mm. Um, what's the plan going forward to ensure that SMEs have that basic support? 
Well, we can do less as councils because you're right, we have this massive challenge of uh, we, we'll, have, we'll have saved by the end of next year over £300 million for the taxpayer locally and that's by you know, doing a lot of things that businesses are used to doing, have used to been doing over the years of just completely reprioritising and changing the way we work and transforming the way that we do things and that's, that's been to the benefit of taxpayers of Leeds um, but we've also tried to protect vulnerable people in the city as well. That's been a real challenge and continues to be. Um, but we, do, we also understand in Leeds the importance of the business community and the SME community in you know, providing the jobs and providing the, um, if you like, the, the business rates and the, the council tax for, for attracting people to Leeds to grow so well. Um, so we don't want to cut that off. And so we're working with the local enterprise partnership very very specifically on making sure that that uh, support for SMEs continues through this next phase of European funding. And those, uh, you know, th those programmes are just about to start um, and there's some really exciting ones and ones that we can, we can see are going to be important for the next three, four years. Then we've got to make the case on Brexit for that money that not to go into the Treasury but to come through into Leeds and Yorkshire so that we can continue those programmes into the 2020s. Okay. Uh, aside from the local enterprise partnership, um, for quite often business awareness is, is, is a key issue when, when receiving support services. Where can they go and, and how do they find out about the information that they need? Uh, well, I, I think we, we've tried very hard to make sure that we're joined up with the, with the LEP. And, you know, that's one of the criticisms in the past has been that there's too many places to go. We do have a team in the council who are here to help. Uh, local businesses, and you can go, you can access that through the website. But the, I, I would, I would say to people, go through the LEP. You know, it's the right, it's the right place to go, and they will work with us in partnership to make sure that it's seamless. And you know, I call it a no wrong door approach. You know, you, you, you shouldn't have to um, be redirected all the time. People need to own the relationship with small businesses um, in the council and we, we're trying to do that through the team that we've got here and make sure that we can then work with you to to get the support from the let that you need but vice versa is true as well so that we're working as in a seamless way to help businesses grow. In terms of your your day-to-day -day role Tom, uh, I can imagine it's an incredibly difficult job being the chief exec of, of somewhere like Leeds uh, and there's, there's, there's obviously going to be a split focus, you know, there's mm. going to be elements where you're going to need to look at the, the overarching strategy for, for the city and the region, whereas there's also the day-to-day -day issues that everybody, need, you know, is, is quite often more concerned about because they experience them. Mm. Um, how do you split and manage your time effectively, I suppose? It's a challenge. Uh, every day is different um, and uh, we, you know, you never know what's going to come in a you know, you can plan your week, but in a big city of three quarters of a million people, things happen. Yeah. Sometimes brilliant things that, you know, you think that you're changing the world and something you've been planning for ages is happening. And then the same day, you'll something will happen and you'll think, how the heck have we done that? How the heck have we allowed that to happen? So it's the nature of uh, leading and working in, you know, big organisations and big cities that you, you've got to make sure, I think, that you... As you said, you know, you see both sides, so the strategic stuff is really important, but actually it's the thing that I've learned more than anything in d actually doing the job um, over the last few years is that you, you've got to get the core provision of public services right. If you're not collecting the bins on time, then, you know, all the rest of it, people aren't really interested. Um, so you've got to have that really strong basis of uh, really good public services. We, uh, we collect two million bins a, w uh, a month so mm -hmm. half a million bins a week, um, and we only miss about um, 400, 300 of those each week. Um, any private sector company who had those figures, 99.94% would be, you know, would kill for them. But for us, if, if I don't collect your bin and you pay your council tax, that's a basic mistake. So, you know, you've always got to be on that stuff and make sure that it's really, really effective. Um, and, and we do some, you know, really important work that's below the radar for vulnerable people. You know, we have about um, 1,200 kids who are in care under our statutory parent parenting, if you like. And um, 
I was in care myself when I was a toddler, so I appreciate how important it is to, for us to get that right and to make sure that the life chances for those young people who are coming out of care are improved because they're about 10 times worse than people who are in, you know, um, with their own families. So um, doing that, making sure that we're dealing with the elderly population and, you know, who are thankfully living longer but are putting extra pressure on the, on the health service, making all that work is a real challenge. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of different things to do, but it's a, it's a fantastic job and it's a privilege to do it. Yeah, and I mean, the, the point that you, that you laid onto, which was that support for people that are, are probably in the, in the worst part of uh, the, the communities are, are suffering the most and are most dependent upon welfare. Um, with the budget cuts that you're facing, how do you, how do you ensure that they're still getting the right type of I suppose, psychological support and um, access that, 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 that's you know, absolutely vital? Yeah, it, it's a challenge, you know, it, it is a challenge and the, uh, as, as the, um, the budget reductions take, um, take place over the next year in particular, we've got to work really hard to make sure that people don't get into further debt and into a sort of spiral of thinking that they can't, they can't cope. So we have to work really, really closely with local um, mental health um, charities and, um, and statutory organisations. We've got to, we have to work really hard with the Department of Work and Pensions and making sure that people have the right advice. Um, and we have teams in the council that are still there to do that, where other, other councils have had to cut those back. We've, we've invested in those teams and made, made sure that they're still there. So hopefully that's going to make a big difference to people. And um, we work really closely with, we've got a, a great charity sector in Leeds, voluntary sector. We're really blessed actually for that. And so we, we work more and more with them to make sure that it's really, uh, you know, we're really joined up and helping those people who need our help the most. And, and that, that is something that I suppose I've experienced from Leeds where there are some really fantastic and unique organisations that are really trying to push that, you know, various agenda in the city that, you know, in the most deprived areas and those that need the most support, yeah. uh, you know, organisations like Simon on the Streets that are doing great work from, from that psychological aspect. But then also the, the creative sector where I think Leeds has positioned itself slightly differently from many other cities in Yorkshire. Um, what's your thoughts on the creative sector in Leeds? Well, we've got our bid um, with my badge for the uh, 2023 European Capital of Culture. It made a massive difference to Glasgow and to Liverpool. I mean, the thing about Leeds which is interesting is we have these amazing cultural institutions already, like, um, you know, the Playhouse and Northern Ballet and Upper North, but some fantastic smaller organisations, um, Chapel FM, uh, East Street Arts, um, some, you know, amazing cultural and creative institutions and a really thriving digital creative sector as well. So we're, we're really excited about using the 2023 bid to galvanise the big and the small, you know, the, 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 if you like, the rural and the urban, um, the, the public and the private, everybody to come together and to see a bigger picture and to, to really have them, you know, give us the most inspiring and interesting innovative ideas that we can use to, to really tell the lead story to the world because not enough people know, you know, what you've just said. And no, um, we, we, we want to use the next few years to get that message across much more and to, to make sure that everybody knows what a fantastic city Leeds is. And the reason it is, is because of the people here. Yeah, I mean, we work with organisations like East Street Arts. And, and from a concept basis, I think it's been something that's been missing um, probably throughout Yorkshire um, to, to that extent. And I think... Um, for businesses to really tap in and take advantage, because again, from a from a business perspective, I, I think there's an opportunity. Do you, do you think to to engage with organisations like East Street Arts? Yeah, definitely. And you know, there's the, I think the the role of art and culture in um, in you know developing businesses and um, giving the people who work in those businesses, if you like, a sense of their a local identity is really important. There's a lot of new offices opened in Leeds recently, and we've been working with them to to make sure that the uh, you know that the paintings and the pictures and the photographs that they have in these new offices aren't you know that they're not soulless. They're actually lead, they're really Leeds and Yorkshire, and uh, the picture of the Tour de France is one of the most common ones now. But we have uh, we have an art gallery in Leeds which is second to none. Um, actually, the the Tate. Um, lends more from Leeds than we do the other way. 
um, and because we have such a fantastic collection and uh, we, we, that's, that's accessible to businesses in the city so that we have a loan system so I'd encourage any businesses who want to get involved to do that but working with East Street Arts and others uh, you know is absolutely the future. Another area which I suppose there's a lot of conversation around is a northern powerhouse. Now we've spoke about Brexit and we spoke about devolution. Um, one of the things in the northern powerhouse report was in the top ten businesses uh, there wasn't anybody included from the northern in terms of growth. There wasn't anybody included from the northern powerhouse. Now is that an issue or is that something that uh, you know will change with time once we get powers of devolution? I, th I think um, if you look at the the growing the fastest growing companies in the north now a lot of them will be coming out of Leeds and Yorkshire. And sometimes it's about getting our message across a bit more. When the, whenever there's an awards ceremony, um, our good friends and uh, colleagues from across the Pennines are often better at uh, putting themselves forward. And there's a bit of a Leeds and Yorkshire thing, I think, which is you sort of don't show off. You know, you get told by your, your gran or your granddad not to show off when you're five, and then you don't. Um, and we need to sort of stop that. We've got to start shouting a bit more about what we're good at. And so, you know, we, we've, we've got to work together to make the case. And part of that is getting out there and, and showing that the Northern Powerhouse, the centre of the Northern Powerhouse is Leeds and, and Yorkshire. You know, we're, we're, if you talk to anyone on the east of the country in the north, they, if they're going to have a meeting, they'll, they'll tend to have it in Leeds or Bradford or somewhere in the middle. And um, that's, that's what we've got to take advantage of. You know, we've got a much better chance to be the capital of the Northern Powerhouse than many other places because of that location and also because we've got such a great city to, to come and meet and do business in. So I think it's about shouting collectively about ourselves. It's not just for the council to shout about the city. It's for businesses, for the charities, for everybody, um, public agencies to do the same. Before we uh, wrap up, I'm, uh I'm going to go on to Twitter, and uh, I know that there's been some questions for you, Tom. Um, question from Martin Roberts. When will all the Yorkshire cities and councils in the ridings join together as one Yorkshire with Assembly or Parliament? That's a question we touched upon previously. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a meeting of all the Yorkshire leaders, um, except a couple um, in York recently, and they've agreed that they want to meet regularly. So uh, the idea of coming together, I think, is, is growing in strength. I think it's... Uh, my personal view is that devolution to Yorkshire is going to happen. It's just a question of when. Um, and uh, I, I think, you know, whether it's a, an all Yorkshire configuration or whether it's a collection, the Yorkshire brand is a fantastic strength for us and we've got to work together and come together increasingly in the future to, to punch our way. I think that's, the, that's a key difference between Yorkshire and I think many other counties, and I might be biased Yorkshireman, is you know you get this feeling of of connection. You know, I think you know you, you know without offending anybody across in Lancashire or anything, but that that Yorkshire pride that Yorkshiremen have and Yorkshire women have, and that sense of I suppose um, Yorkshire spirit. Um, I mean, how do you think we best harness that? I mean, we've had the Todd of Yorkshire. We, you know, hopefully, you know, will Leeds be hosting a, a World Cup event in 2018 as well, potentially? Yeah, the 2019, 2019 uh, road, road racing, yeah, championships, we certainly hope so. And, um, I mean, Sir Gary Verity's done a fantastic job at Welcome to Yorkshire, and I think we've got to continue to back Welcome to Yorkshire with its uh, ambitious agenda. Um, and we continue to do that from Leeds and from the other councils in the area. Um, I think we've got to uh, look for other opportunities like the 2023 bid to, you know, that isn't just about Leeds, it, we want to uh, make sure that's about the region as well. Um, and we've got to get more powers and to shape our own destiny. And as I said, whether that's, whether that's a collection of us doing that, you know, Sheffield and Leeds and others, or whether it's Yorkshire as a whole, it, it's going to happen. You know, it, it's just a question of when and we've just got to make sure that we make that meaningful for people on the ground you know citizens feel that it's different because there's no point in us getting that devolution and then just keeping the power to ourselves we've got to make sure that people feel that difference and have better job opportunities better transport services um, more investment into their area on a final note before we wrap up Tommy mm. is there anything that you want to say to our members is there a message that you want to send from Leeds uh, to the Yorkshire Enterprise Network I think just get um, you know 
thanks for everything that you're doing for the area. You know, we, we, we absolutely appreciate the role that the network and the, the, the small businesses that make it up are, are making to the, to the area and we see them as the lifeblood of the economy. Um, secondly, I think um, just shout about what we're doing more, you know, get out there and make the case for Leeds and for Yorkshire and, um, you know, we'll, we'll be right on your side in doing that and, and maybe finally, you know, there's a really open invitation to get involved in things like our 2023 bid um, to support us in trying to get devolution down to the area. Um, you know, we want to work with people. We, we want to collaborate with people, where, whatever the boundary of devolution is. You know, Leeds is a European city. It's a it's a global city, and we we see our um, our collaboration and our competition coming from across the world. We don't see a you know a small area of the country that we've got to focus on. We we we're, we're now proud of what we're doing, and we want people to be involved in that. Fantastic. Great having you, Tom. Great to Thank see you. you.